Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 63 to the power 14 and 33 to the power 17. And we're going to figure out which number is larger. Do you think these numbers are pretty close or they, are they far apart? We're going to look at the numerical values at the end as well. Now, these are very, very large numbers. You could probably approximate they're very large. So, how do we compare them? Could we use logarithms? A lot of times with these kinds of questions, people say, okay, why don't we just log both sides? Base 10 is typically what is done for these problems. And for example, if you log this number, then you get log 63 to the power 14, which can be written as 14 times log 63. Again, this is base 10 when I don't write it because we can move this power to the front. Now, how do you compare these values? We need to know what log 63 is. Do we know it? Probably not by heart, right? So, this works with a calculator, but we're supposed to do this problem without a calculator. Even though it's not stated explicitly, that's what's usually meant. If this is a competition problem, you're not allowed to use a calculator most of the time. So, how do we approach these problems? There's a couple different ways. Sometimes we use numbers that are nearby and we can kind of use them uh, as a transition. Uh, sometimes uh, we use the binomial theorem. For example, we can kind of look at, obviously these numbers are greater than one, but suppose we divided one of the numbers by the other. Let's say we look at the quotient like this, and I could probably write part of this at least like this, right? and then separate 33 to the third. And then this can actually be written as something like 33 over 63. By the way, that can be simplified to to the power of 14 times this. And now I can kind of write this expression as 11 over 21. And then for 11 over 21, I could probably use something like 1 minus 10 over 21 maybe, and then use the binomial theorem. By the way, I'm not saying these are valid methods. These are, yes, valid methods, but they don't always help. But we sometimes use them, okay? In this problem, we're going to use a very different strategy, which is going to be comparing these two numbers that we can compare, okay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but here's how it goes. First of all, I'm going to start with 63. 63 is close to 64, don't you think? So 63 is obviously less than 64. And when you raise both sides to the 14th power, that fact does not change. Why? Because you write the number 14 times, so it gets bigger and bigger. Too much bigger. Now, this is one way to look at it. But here's the thing. 64 is a power of 2, so we can replace 64 with 2 to the power 6, and then to the power 14. And what is so good about it is, first of all, if you can get a prime base, that would be awesome, because comparing them, that will be easier. And here we're supposed to multiply, obviously. So 6 times 14 is 64, I mean 84, that's what I meant, 2 to the power 84. Again, this is a very large number, so as a conclusion, my number, one of the numbers, is less than this number. But how does that relate to the other number? So here's what you need to think about. 33 is close to 32. Would you agree? And what happens here in this case is we have a 64 and we have a 32. And both of these numbers are powers of 2. Great. That's the main idea. So now we're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the 17th power. Therefore, we're going to be getting 33 to the 17th power. And of course, that's going to be greater than 32 to the 17th power because 33 is bigger. And now we can kind of replace, like remember what we did here? We replaced 64 with 6, 2 to the 6th. And 32 is 2 to the 5th. And this is what makes this problem really cool and workable because now we are kind of looking at two powers of 2. And this will become 2 to the power 85. Remember the rule, a to the power x to the power y is a to the power xy. We multiply the exponent. This is also called the superpower property. So far, so good. Now, what's really nice about these two results is that this number 
and this number are close, right? I mean, one of them is two times the other, so not bad, but look at the exponents. They're one apart. Beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and put it together using the fact that obviously 2 to the power 84 is less than 2 to the power 85. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and start with this. 63 to the power 14 because I have it all the way on the left in this chain of inequalities I'm about to write. So here's how it goes. 63 to the power 14 is less than 64 to the power 14, which is 2 to the power 84. I can kind of skip these steps because we already know what it is. And then 2 to the 84 is less than 2 to the power 85, obviously, which is this number, which is this number, which is less than 33 to the 17th power. Make sense? This is 2 to the power 85 or 32 to the power 17. This is 33 to the power 17, and obviously, 33 is bigger, right? So that's going to be our inequality. And what does this mean? This just means that as a conclusion, I can safely say that, hey, this number is less than this number. By using the transitive property twice, and you don't have to use it twice, you can kind of skip one of these numbers, but basically as a conclusion, I can safely say that 63 to the power 14 is less than 33 to the power 17. And since we were looking for the larger number, this would be the winner. Yay! That's our winner for tonight. And let's see what's going to happen next. So, before I show you the numerical values, I kind of want to look at the alternative approaches. I, I haven't really thought this out, but maybe I'll just try something, okay? Remember, I was kind of telling you we could possibly write the quotient. So, in other words, we can look at this quotient. By the way, I did it the other way around, but I think getting a 1 plus something would be better. What I mean by that is you can kind of write this as 16 to the 14 divided by 33 to the 14, and I'm going to multiply it by 1 over 33 to the power 3. This may or may not be a good thing, but here's what I'm thinking. I want to write these together as like the same exponent like this and then obviously I don't know what I'm going to do with this but I can go ahead and simplify this 21 over 11 and now this is cool because 21 over 11 can actually be written as 1 plus something right obviously 11 goes in 21 one time with a remainder of 10 so we can kind of write this as 1 plus 10 over 11 this is where the uh, what is it called um, the binomial theorem comes in. Now, by the way, instead of multiplying these two things, I can kind of compare this to 33 to the power 3. Now, if we end up getting something bigger on the left-hand side, this would mean that, and I'm just saying this is not true necessarily, but I'm just speculating. So if this is the case, then from here, what do we conclude? We conclude that this expression is greater than 1, which means, because I looked at the ratio, because this uh, quotient is greater than 1, then the top number is larger. But is that the case? We talked about it, and that's not the case. The way I just tried, and hopefully this gave you some ideas, and hopefully you can try this on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at the numerical values, and we'll finish up with that. So the numerical values are actually pretty close, because look at the order of magnitude. They both have 10 to the power 25, and uh, kind of one of the numbers, the larger one, obviously, this one uh, happens to be maybe about roughly four times the smaller number. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.